Hello students. Today we will be discussing the RGHS exam questions from pectoral region in anatomy. So uh, from the pectoral region chapter these are the questions which are frequently asked. Pectoralis major muscle, pectoralis minor muscle, clavi pectoral fascia, serratus anterior muscle and winging of scapula. Mammary gland is also a very important question which is a very important 10 marker we will be discussing in our coming classes. Now this muscle what you are seeing here is the pectoralis major muscle. This is a very important 5 marker. So we will be discussing this muscle. Any muscle you have to discuss it under the following headings. Origin, insertion, nerve supply, action, applied aspect if present. So first we will discuss the origin of pectoralis major muscle. This muscle has two heads. That fibers arising from the clavicle is called as clavicular head and fibers arising from the sternum and the coastal cartilages they are called as sternocostal head. First we will study the clavicular head. So the clavicular head arises from the anterior surface of medial two-third of the clavicle. So that is the sternal, I mean the clavicular head. Now the sternocostal head arises from half of the anterior surface of the manubrium, half of the anterior surface of the sternum and second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth coastal cartilages. The sternocostal head also arises from aponeurosis of a muscle which is present here and that muscle is known as external oblique muscle. This muscle is a muscle of abdomen. So that is the origin of sternocostal head. Now we have discussed the origin of the pectoralis major muscle. So this is the clavicular head and this is the sternocostal head of the pectoralis major muscle. So this was to show you that this is the external oblique muscle. This is the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle. You can appreciate here that pectoralis major is arising from aponeurosis of a muscle that is called as external oblique muscle. Now we have already studied the origin of this muscle. Let us move on to the insertion. It is inserted onto the humerus. Where in the humerus? You have the intertubercular sulcus here. So this sulcus here is called as the intertubercular sulcus. This sulcus has two lips. So the one lip lateral is called as the lateral lip. The lip which is medial is called as the medial lip. Our pectoralis major is inserted onto the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus. This is also called as bicipital groove. So that was about the origin insertion of pectoralis major. Now we will study the nerve supply of this muscle. This muscle is supplied by the lateral and medial pectoral nerve. These are the branches of the brachial plexus. So you can appreciate here lateral pectoral nerve and the medial pectoral nerve are supplying a muscle. This muscle is pectoralis major muscle. Now we move on to the actions of this muscle. So this muscle mainly helps in the medial rotation and flexion and also adduction of the shoulder joint. Now we have the uh, we have discussed almost under all headings origin, insertion, nerve supply and action. So this is a concise answer how to write and what to write if this question is asked for a 5 marker. So this was the pectoralis major muscle. If we cut it and open you get another small muscle here that is called as pectoralis minor muscle. Now the origin insertion nerve supply action of this muscle is this muscle arises from the third, fourth and fifth rib near the coastal cartilages. After arising 
it is inserted on to the coracoid process of the scapula nerve supply just like pectoralis major it is also supplied by medial and lateral pectoral nerve the action of this muscle is that when you try to push something forwards this muscle will pull the scapula forwards along with a muscle called as serratus anterior and when this muscle acts it depresses the shoulder joint so that was about the pectoralis minor muscle and an mcq question this is a key muscle because this muscle divides the axillary artery into three part what artery you are seeing here that is the axillary artery this artery is divided into three parts by pectoralis minor muscle that is why it's called as key muscle now we discuss a very important five marker and that is clavi pectoral fascia the fascia is called as clavi pectoral because it is attached to the clavicle and it is present in the pectoral region that is what is called as clavi pectoral fascia now this fascia it actually extends in between a muscle here which is called as subclavius so this is the subclavius and this is the pectoralis minor muscle the fascia present in between these two that is known as clavi pectoral fascia if you properly observe in this diagram this fascia encloses two muscle those are subclavius and pectoralis minor muscle now this fascia is attached to clavicle to be very precise which part of the clavicle on the inferior surface of the clavicle you have a groove here and that is called as subclavian groove that is called as subclavian groove so this clavi pectoral fascia will split to enclose the muscle and at is it is attaching to the two lips of the subclavian groove we'll see it in the next slide then this muscle splits to enclose another muscle that is called as pectoralis minor it continues as the suspensory ligament and it is attached to the axillary sheet now very important thing what are the structures pierced by this uh, uh, what structures pierce clavi pectoral fascia it's a very important mcq question you can see here the vein is the cephalic vein you have an artery here in the red that is the thoracoacromial artery the yellow color structure here is the nerve and that is the lateral pectoral nerve so lateral pectoral nerve thoracoacromial artery cephalic vein will pierce this fascia now this is to show you that this is the subclavian groove and what i'm drawing in the red these are the lips of the subclavian groove to which the clavi pectoral fascia will split to enclose a muscle that muscle is called as subclavius muscle so that was about clavi pectoral fascia so to summarize this fascia splits to enclose two muscles what are the two muscles subclavius muscle and pectoralis minor muscle on to the clavicle where is this fascia attached it is attached to two the two lips of the subclavian groove thereby it encloses this muscle which is subclavius then it continues as after enclosing subclavius muscle it continues as clavi pectoral fascia which is a single layer it again splits to enclose pectoralis minor again joins to form a single layer called as suspensory ligament and it is attached to the axillary fascia what are the structures pierced by this lateral pectoral nerve thoracoacromial artery and cephalic vein very important so this completes the clavi pectoral fascia next we discuss a very important five marker that is serratus anterior also called as the boxer's muscle or the swimmer's muscle you can appreciate the serratus anterior becoming very prominent in these actions now serratus anterior it is named so because this muscle Ha, it looks as if it is serrated so this is serrations right that's why it's called as serratus it is called anterior because it is placed in the anterior aspect of your body now the origin of this is very simple this muscle arises from the anterior aspect of upper eight ribs which part of the ribs in the mid axillary line 
So that is the origin. What is the insertion? It is inserted onto the anterior surface of the medial border of the scapula. What is the nerve supply? It is supplied by long thoracic nerve. That is the long thoracic nerve. The action is when you try to push something, when you try to push a wall or when you try to box, what happens is this muscle will draw the scapula forward and it will bring about the desired action of pushing and punching. And also when you raise your arm above the head as in case of combing, so this muscle also helps there. So this is to show you that the serratus anterior is attached to inserted into anterior surface on the medial border of the scapula. So this is how to show you the prominence of serratus anterior muscle. Now this is to show you that serratus anterior muscle is supplied by long thoracic nerve. That is the long thoracic nerve. Now in any condition which will damage the long thoracic nerve which supplies the serratus anterior muscle, this muscle will be paralyzed. In that condition what actually happens is when you try to push a wall or when you try to punch something, the scapula instead of moving forwards, what happens is the medial border and the inferior angle of the scapula become very prominent. So this condition is known as winging of scapula wherein the long thoracic nerve is injured. Therefore, serratus anterior muscle is paralyzed. So when you try to push the wall or when you try to punch something, the scapula medial border and the inferior angle of the scapula, it starts winging which means that it becomes very prominent and this condition is known as winging of scapula. So this was, uh, these were the questions asked in pectoral region uh, in RGHS examination. In the next class we will be discussing about the mammary gland. Thank you.